and welcome to Motivational Mastery. As you can see, I'm not Gary, but he's sitting right next to me, and we're here to talk about your new season coming up. Yes, very exciting. All right, so Looking tell me about it. season two. Well, well, you, let's talk about season one for a second. Let's backtrack a okay. little. Okay. So tell us about season one if anybody missed okay. it. For starters, I do want to thank Wayne for giving me the opportunity to present a series on his network of motivation, which is called Motivational Mastery. Okay, so now I have to interrupt that you. That was season one. Okay. Okay. So you thank me, but there's so many more people behind the scenes that make this yes, happen. Yes, I like thank Lisa, Wayne, James, Gio. Yes, Wayne and all his associates. Right. We have a whole team. It at, just doesn't happen because of me. At WRPBI TV here. Okay. Uh, okay, to make things happen. Okay. And you did make me famous in Atlantic Avenue Magazine. My nose was in there. Your nose was in there. Right. And actually, in the March issue of Atlantic Avenue Magazine, if you want, I will show you Wayne's nose. My nose made it. I'm a hit. A few pictures of myself plus Wayne's nose. Okay. <laughs> a few pictures of the studio here and a feature article on, on motivation, on what I am here to accomplish. Now, okay. you have all those shows in your archive. Yes. So all anybody who wants one. to catch up can catch up by going can to the website. Those click shows on, on the archive. They can get information on my new website, GaryMotivates.com. And you have evolved over this time. I have evolved since I've only been on this journey less than a year now. Okay. And I have given motivational talks monthly. And I have been involved in giving my motivational mastery series here on a weekly basis. So season one was really about motivation, different topics each week. But what evolved from season one, what I learned about motivation, was that the key to motivation is really <coughs> self-motivation is how you can learn how to motivate yourself on a daily basis and stay motivated daily. That is the key. Zig Ziglar said it best. People do not think that motivation lasts, but neither does bathing. And that's why we recommend it daily. Now, part of what I'm trying to achieve here is that America, the middle class, the 99%, us, Main Street, okay, we've been sabotaged by the big banks, Wall Street, the insurance companies, the drug companies. And it's like we're boxed in a corner. It's like we're lost on Main Street. But there is a way out. And the way out is through self-motivation through each of us becoming a better you, a better us, lifting ourselves up to reach our potential, to strive for our potential, to reach this mountaintop of achievement, success, so that we can then in fact move forward and become a better you, so we can then take that and from that, you're going to have a better family and a better community and better cities and states and a better country and a better America because America was at its best when the middle class was a vibrant, productive, prosperous middle class. That is not the case today. Do you think we lost that oomph? I think we've been dragged down and, you know, we, we look for answers, and, but the answers are within ourselves. They're within our own hearts and our own souls to realize that we all have a greatness. We all have a uniqueness in us. We all have talents in us. And it's a matter of taking those talents and motivating yourself, moving forward every day to to achieve, to become 
more than you are today to reach for tomorrow. And, you know, it's a process. It's simple, but it may not be easy. But you have to start somewhere, okay? You know, the, the happier, the better you are at improving yourself, the happier your life is going to be, the happier you are going to be. You know, I, I like to say self-medicate yourself with motivation because that's the drug. That's the best drug out there is motivation on a daily basis. Now you have to be consistent and do certain things every day. Confucius, who I believe still his family gets all the royalties from all those fortune cookies, mm. said it best, as long as you keep on going, as long as you do not stop, no matter how slowly you go, keep on going. And Winston Churchill said continuous effort is the key, not strength, not intelligence, but in continuous effort is the key to unlocking your potential. And we all have that potential in us. It, it's a matter of rising above all, all the mishigash, as they say, that surrounds us every day, is daily to move forward. You know, it's interesting. If you've been driving for years and you see hitchhikers, there's the hitchhikers that stand here and hitchhike wanting to go over here. There's the hitchhikers that continually walk and move forward mm. that one way or the other will get to their point. This one that's standing here waiting will never get to his to point. point. It's ne this one is not motivated to do anything. The one that's walking and hitchhiking will eventually get to his point one way or another. Yes. And that's self-motivation. Yes, and, and that is so true. And so each of us have this responsibility, and first to ourselves, because until you help yourself, you can't help others. But then a, a greater responsibility, a greater cause, a greater, a greater fight to fight, okay, that is bigger than you. And when you're involved in something that is bigger than just you, special things can happen. Now, I will tell you, I'm no different than any of you. I have my good days and my bad days, okay, or my not so good days. I have my ups and downs. I have, you know, my fears, my weaknesses. But I have my goals. I have my visions. I have my purpose. And as Sinatra once sang, I've been up and down and over and out, but I did it my way. So each of you have to do it your way. But your way is the way it should be done because you're unique. And every one of us has that uniqueness. We're born with that uniqueness. Our DNA proves it, okay? Um, no, our DNA, nobody, we will never be, you never get, we'll never be who we, or our uniqueness is set in stone. And it's never happened before, and it will never be repeated. Each of us is a unique individual. And each of us has different talents and skills and a greatness inside of us in whatever field it may be. Um, now, as I said to Wayne earlier, season one was fascinating for me as a motivational speaker to um, bring out certain subjects and topics on motivation. But what evolved from that was the realization, again, that the key is self-motivation. Didn't you have to self-motivate yourself to come in every week, to prepare your stuff, to have it ready? How many days do you go where you say, yeah, I don't feel good, I, you know what, I'm just going to sit it out? But no, you motivate yourself each week to prepare your show, to have it ready. And let me tell you something. Doing a show by yourself without a co-host just standing here and, and, and speaking is very, very difficult. And that takes a lot of self-motivation. So Thank you. if you really learn from someone who does it, you'll really learn that it does work and it can happen, even for them. Yes, that's true. And, and even for myself, okay? Um, as Wayne just said very aptly, um, it was not easy at times. There were times I just wanted to just throw it away and say, you know, I, I, I can't do this. But I forced myself. 
I just challenged myself and said, okay, let's just get it done. Let's get this done. You know, you got to break things down. You know, somebody, I think it was anonymous, that once said, everything is difficult until it becomes easy. So you got to start somewhere and, and you got to have that inner, you got to find that inner drive. It's there. It's been pushed down because of all the trials and tribulations we do go through. And believe me, I still go through, I have enough family trials and tribulations, and I'm sure we all deal with different aspects of life, whether it's family, financial, or whatever it may be. But you gotta be able to rise above that, you know? So, in doing all these shows in season one, and doing the eight-part series of Motivational Mastery, as I said, um, something fascinating came out of it. And it didn't happen while I was doing the shows because I was so wrapped up each week in just putting together that 30-minute show that I was doing on my own with no guests, okay? Um, and so after that ended, which is only a month or so ago, it gave me, I had some time to sort of self-reflect on what I had done and what evolved out of it was the whole key to motivation is self-motivation. And I realized that this was an area that was not being touched upon by the so-called motivational masters that are out there, from the Tony Robbins to the Les Browns to the Jack Can Canfields to whomever it may be. They're all brilliant and they're all great. But Interestingly enough, they want to just motivate and have you come back and come back again for more and come to the workshops and buy the books and buy the CDs and do all of that and nothing wrong with that, okay? But I started looking at it from a different angle, okay? Because, you know, I was somebody who was just starting in this field and I had to find a different way, a different approach to motivation and I believe that I have found it in self-motivation. Nobody touches upon that. And, and I sort of really realized that when I was able to newly incorporate under Self-Motivation Inc. So, as we proceed to season two, I have now taken it, I guess, upon myself to a certain degree to help people out there learn the steps behind self-motivation, to teach the steps of self-motivation and what I have come up with and upcoming and soon to be published will be my first book called The Ten Steps to Self-Motivation. Now, just quickly to give you an overview because my season two is gonna be formulated around these 10 steps of self-motivation. And so step number one is really very simple. Again, everything's simple but not easy. Step number one, is to learn how to think again. Take the time, take 30 minutes a day to self-reflect, to self-examine, to think about your life, where you are, where you want to go, who you want to become, what legacy you want to leave. I actually did a talk about two weeks ago, I was asked by an older group down here in Boca Raton to do a, a talk about legacy. And I said to myself, well, I can't talk about a legacy of leaving your, how you leave your money. That's not my area of expertise. So I came up with a subject called leaving a legacy of purpose. And it sort of hit a chord with people because we're talking about it's not what you've earned in your lifetime. It's what you've learned. It's what you leave in others. But step number one is learning how to think. Taking that time every day 30, 20, 30 minutes and thinking, self-reflecting, self-examining. Step number two, 
is also finding another 20, 30 minutes a day. And you have to do this daily. That's what's helped me get from where I was to where I am today. And step number two is read, read, read. Okay? Read about, you can start reading about your own work, whatever work you're doing, so you can be more productive at your work. But read about the great people of history. That has helped me tremendously. Reading about from the Einsteins to the Da Vinci's to Darwin to Churchill to Lincoln to Martin Luther King and so on and so forth. Tesla. Tesla. <laughs> Great thing, actually. I just saw a report. I was watching a TED talk, so to speak. This is a Wayne talk, right? Not right. Okay. About the owner of Tesla. Now, I forget his name, but... Ten years ago, he decided that he was going to create the first electric car. Everybody told him it would take 20 years, okay? But he did it in 10 years. Now, he has started a new project, and that's what this TED Talk was about, called, um, I think it's SpaceX, it's called, where he plans on landing a colony on Mars in the next 20 years. And everybody tells them it's going to take 40 years. And NASA is already working on it, and their projections are much further out. But they believe that this individual, and again, I forget the name. Do you know the name of the No. One? Okay. Um, but that he will do that. I think it's called Space Project X or something. That within 20 years, that you can actually land a colony of people on Mars. Um, do you know the origin of Tesla? Well, um, what that stands for? Well, it was a person, uh, Nicholas or Nikolai yes. Tesla, and um, he, I, and I believe I get this right. He was self-motivated to make a perpetual and to have perpetual energy. Yes, and that's how it started. And that's what I know. Which okay. Is very little, because I know a little bit, a lot of stuff. <coughs> okay. But only a little. Well, you'd be good on Jeopardy. Oh, yeah, I'd be good on Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Tesla would have been a more well known, okay? He actually discovered the AC current back in the 1800s, but it was really Edison that discovered the DC, and Tesla was really more of a genius in that regard in the formation of electricity than Edison was. And actually, Tesla then, after discovering the AC current, um, Edison ended up developing the DC and electricity, the light bulb, so on and so forth. But Tesla then started Westinghouse. Oh, see, I didn't know yeah. that. Yes. So that's from reading. So step number two of the 10 steps to self-motivation is to read, read, read. And you know, when you start reading about people who have been masters of their field, you start to understand that, you know what, all our brains are the same, okay? There's no different. We all have the same brain. It's how we use it, okay? And you know, these people found a field and they were, and they moved forward in what they want to do. They found their passion. So reading is so important, and read inspirational stories. Every football team, every sports team has inspirational slogans all over the locker room. And read about human behavior. You know, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is still the best guide to dealing with other humans, which we have to deal with all the time, and most of them are human. So step two is read, read, read. Step three is discovering your passion. Discovering what you really maybe were meant to do. You know, when I did my first talk eight, nine months ago, it was begin now to become the person you were always meant to be. Because we all had a personal greatness as kids. We wanted to do special things. And we wanted to become an astronaut or an architect or a writer or a poet or whatever. But then we get caught up in the story of life, of adult responsibilities and this and that. And we lose that, unfortunately. So find it. Find what your passion is. Or be passionate about your work. That's so important. Be a rock star at work. Because you'll realize if you approach work every day, opportunities will arise. So that's step number three, discovering your passion, being passionate about work. Fourth step is the path to persistence. 
to be persistent, to persevere, to overcome, to do, to move forward every day. How you have to continually be persistent. It is such a key to success, to achieving, to getting to where you want to go is doing it every day. That's what I did. I said, regardless, I got to do something that moves me forward every day. And I have done that over this last year, whether it's reading or thinking or whatever it is that I'm dealing with. Move forward, do something positive every day. And it makes a big difference. The fifth step then I like to say is patience now or the power of patience. One must learn that nothing happens overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. A, a newborn takes nine months to develop. An olive tree, the greatest of all trees, takes a hundred years to grow. An onion plant grows in nine weeks. So you have to have patience to let it evolve. You know, Edison, I think, said it best. Most men who was so close to was so close to success but then they gave up right before that next bend in the corner where they would have achieved their dream so you can't give up as Winston Churchill said during World War II never 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 give up you have to keep fighting you have to have understand the bigger goal out there and have the patience to Keep that goal in sight. That's what gets you through the daily battles. The we're sixth, the top of the time, so we got to be really kind of careful. The sixth here. step is making friends with your fear. Okay, FDR said it best. FDR said, you know what? The only thing to fear is fear itself. And Amelia Earhart called fear paper tigers. So you have to overcome your fears and your doubts and your obstacles and make friends with your fears. Fears are nothing but an emotion. And then the seventh step is the mindset of courage. Okay, boldness. Aristotle said courage is the first of all human virtues that makes every other virtue possible. And Goethe, the great writer, said be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. Boldness has a, a magic, a power, a greatness to it, so be bold. And the eighth step is the strategic approach how to view the bigger picture. All great military generals see the whole battlefield and they know how to deal with the battle at hand. The great chess champions, they think 10, 20 moves ahead so they know what move to make at that time. And the ninth step is called hitting the curveball. And what is hitting the curveball? You know, every baseball player can hit a fastball, but you gotta learn if you're gonna succeed how to deal with the unexpected, how to hit that curveball, how to be able to, again, deal with the unexpected, how to deal with what you don't see coming when it does come, and it all comes to all of us. And the last step of the 10 steps to self-motivation is carpe diem, seize the day, seize each and every day. You go full circle. In, in life itself, we go full circle. We have about a minute left. Um, your new season is exciting. Yes, I look I'm forward. so looking forward to season two. Which will it, start in which June? Which the first episode will be a week from tonight. Okay. That's very cool. You yes. Know, I know what it's like to do this, and I know it takes off motivation. And, you know, I know... Uh, you know, my first 99 tries at this were failures, mm -hmm. so I learned 99 ways not, not to, do, to it. do it. Yes. Okay, and I stuck to it. I drove an electric skateboard scooter, no car. I gave up everything mm -hmm. to have my dream. I keep a picture of my house where this all started that, on the great. wall yes. because it shows where I was right. and where I've come to today. Mm -hmm. Everything that you say about self motivation is so important for you guys to know and learn. And these up and coming weeks. You're going to learn so much about how to use, how to make the best you that you can be by using self-motivation. And, and that is the key. So please join me one week from tonight for the season premiere of the 10 Steps to Self-Motivation. And always remember, carpe diem, seize the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, pleasure. Wayne. My pleasure. Bye-bye now.
I don't think I've ever imagined it when I was younger or thinking ahead of what it would be like to have a family, but um, having two girls, that can be a little tricky financially. That's why we created American Express Serve, a full-service prepaid account that helps you handle your money simply and affordably. You can upload checks, pay bills online for free, and when you need to, you can always check your balance. With direct deposit, you get same-day access to your paycheck, and you can put money aside for when you need it. Plus, it's all backed by the 24-7 service of American Express, all for just $1 a month. We won't think about the money in 10 years, but exactly. we'll remember that, no. that first middle school dance. Get started today and let your serve account help you take control of your money with ease. I think we're doing a pretty good job. This is what membership is. This is what membership does. Get it at serve.com. <laughs> He's your grandpa. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that for? Presenting Riverstone with the best of everything in an ideal Naples location. 11 gorgeous decorated models with a fabulous clubhouse and an incredible resort lifestyle included. You deserve the best. Luxury residences at Riverstone. From the 400s to the 700s. Immokalee East to Logan Boulevard. <laughs>